Um, my name is Bernd Kuhn. I'm from the CUT um, group uh, at Hoffman La Roche in Basel. And uh, it's my pleasure to uh, give you an introduction to the FXR data set that was used for the current challenge and that um, we selected together with Markus Rudolph from the Biostructure Group. So I'll give you a few uh, slides on the experimental details, but also explain you the motivation why we selected exactly uh, this data set. So obviously, um, that was a previous um, project at Roche. We were able to determine a number of co-crystal structures for FXR and also have a lot of um, SAR available for uh, different chemical classes. <clears throat> now, compared to other protein targets, there are some special elements in the FXR binding site, which uh, makes it a very challenging target for computational predictions. Um, so FXR was a previous watch target against um, dyslipidemia. Uh, during the course of the project, we worked on uh, several different uh, chemical classes. So one class is shown here. Um, these are benzimidazoles. Um, in the data set, uh, there is a total of 21 co-crystal structures with FXR and also 47 uh, compounds with IC50 values. Now, a few papers on FXR were published previously by us, and uh, two of them comprise benzimidazole class. So the binding mode of uh, the benzimidazole scaffold in FXR um, was known um, to the public at the beginning of that challenge. Now, most IC50 data in that series are for the racemates. Uh, so typically from the synthesis, we had a 50 um, to 50 mixture of both enantiomers, but uh, generally the S enantiomer, as is shown here, uh, is considerably more active by two to four orders of magnitude. Also, um, uh, in crystallization trials, um, when FXR was incubated with the resumate, the S enantiomer uh, crystallized uh, preferentially. So apart from that, uh, there is another data set containing a number of spirocycles. So for this series, there are three X-ray structures um, and uh, 22 SAR examples. Um, for this series, the binding mode was not published before, and some of the compounds constitute the free energy subset um, two. And finally, there, is, uh, there are two closely related sets of uh, sulfonamide substituted uh, bicyclic scaffolds, tetrahydropyridines and uh, tetrahydroparastolopyridines, um, for which we got three X-ray structures and have 23 SAR examples um, in the uh, data set. And uh, part of that data set comprises the free energy subset one. So overall, there um, are uh, 37 crystal structures in the data set, uh, one of them being the APO structure. Now the IC50 range for the X-ray set is several orders of uh, magnitude, so ranging from 8 nanomolar to um, more than 100 micromolar. Here on the right you see the PIC50 distribution for the data set. Overall, um, the SAR for um, all 102 compounds range from 0.3 nanomolar to um, greater than 100 micromolar. Uh, some experimental details. So binding data were obtained using a scintillation proximity assay, which is a competition binding assay using a uh, radioactive uh, tracer molecule. Now FXR is a nuclear hormone receptor which contains uh, DNA and ligand binding domain. The binding assay and crystallography was done with the ligand binding domain only. So for binding, we used a uh, gst tech version of um, the ligand binding domain. Now crystallography in that project was very challenging, requiring co-crystallization screening for every um, inhibitor. So two different uh, co-activator uh, peptides were used in the crystallization um, set up the NCO-A1 and the CRIP-1 shown here. Um, crystals were obtained in uh, a number of different um, uh, space groups, and um, as um, was um, 
shown in the crystallization detail, I think that was on the uh, web page. Um, basically, each structure had a different uh, crystallization uh, uh, mixture. Uh, resolution of the structures in the data set range from 1.7 to 2.6 angstrom, and on the right you see a typical um, structure of the ligand binding domain um, with um, uh, a lot of uh, almost uh, exclusively made up of alpha helices and uh, the ligand in uh, green here and the coactivator peptide in magenta. I have an overlays um, all the X-ray crystal structures um, of the data set, then there is um, considerable protein flexibility that uh, becomes apparent. So some helices which are in close proximity uh, to the ligands show uh, very backbone conformations, and uh, um, so these are shown here. Uh, helix 2, which is uh, more towards the back than helix 6. Helix 11 here and uh, Helix 12 in the usual nuclear hormone receptor nomenclature. Obviously, there is some um, flexibility in the loop regions connecting the different um, alpha helices, and there is additionally uh, quite a substantial side chain induced fit, which I will show you in a bit more detail on the next uh, page. So as a computation chemist, I worked on a lot of structure-based projects, um, but uh, FXR was certainly one of the more challenging binding sites uh, for molecular design. The reasons for that are that the um, binding cavity is predominantly hydrophobic. So here in, uh, in the figure, you see um, the interactions between um, a, a bile acid. So the binding site recognizes um, a bile acid. In that structure, you see a, a, an analog of a CDCA, sex acyl, uh, CDCA, which is a bile acid derivative um, in that public domain structure. Um, in addition to these many hydrophobic contacts, there is a high number, unusually high number of methionine residues lining the binding site. So this also um, suggests a high protein flexibility. And in contrast, um, to other protein targets like kinases or proteases, um, there's no obvious ligand anchor like hinge binding in a kinases or um, the active serine or cysteine in uh, serine or cysteine proteases and yes, one protein. So this is um, uh, additional challenges which then led to uh, strong induced um, fit effects that we observe and. Um, only few and uh, poorly conserved interaction motifs. I guess that can be shown here in the overlay of two uh, quite potent FXR inhibitors, which are 45 and 73 uh, nanomolar, which um, share hardly any overlap of um, uh, pharmacophore features. However, there's um, a little bit of uh, conserved interaction motif if there is a carboxylate or another negatively charged group present, then that typically uh, goes to the uh, bottom uh, left of the binding site as shown here. But the position uh, of the carboxylate is not very well conserved in the different inhibitors. Some words to the um, uh, binding modes. So there is uh, typically a good conservation within the classes. Uh, if you look uh, only at benzimidazole spirocycles or these tetrahydrocarolopyridines, then the um, uh, scaffolds typically overlay very well, as shown here in that uh, picture. This does not apply, however, um, to the phenyl isoxazole. So in the uh, data set, there were four phenyl isoxazoles, uh, very similarly substituted. Now, if you look at the different uh, binding modes of uh, three of these four phenyl isoxazoles, you see that the phenyl isoxazole ends up in uh, three very different positions in the FXR binding site. And uh, generally, there is, um, as I said before, very poor overlay of uh, different um, chemical classes. So clearly, it's very challenging, if not uh, impossible, to derive, a, derive an overlay from a ligand-based approach only.
Now there were two specific um, free energy data sets, one for the spiral cycles for which um, the binding mode um, is shown here, which has a lot of hydrophobic interaction as shown here by the uh, blue dashed lines and then um, on the uh, uh, left part some uh, polar groups, also some uh, solvent um, interaction or solvent excess. And um, there are some interesting questions in that data set where I'm curious to see how well the different competitors did. So, um, for example, um, in the data set there were uh, 12 closely related analogs where there were um, 12 small substitutions on the terminal uh, sulfone uh, phenyl ring with, however, a large um, affinity range. So, 20, ranging from 28 nanomolar here for the uh, dichloro also substituted um, phenyl here uh, over this one here, parachloro, with 735 nanomolar, and then the naked phenyl, which has only 42 um, micromolar. So very little variation in uh, in the structure. Binding mode is very likely maintained in this theory, and I think these data sets where you have small um, atomic differences, structural differences, but large differences in affinity are uh, really important um, to understand the deficiency for each method. Now in modeling, um, well, we're generally good in filling pockets, however, quite poor in predicting effects of polar interactions. And this one has also some SAR, which is interesting in that respect. Um, so there is um, the very polar carboxylate group here, um, which uh, with its negative charge, which has an IC50 of 5.6 micromolar, uh, while less polar function groups like the phenol here or the pyridine. Um, are less active. So it will be interesting to see how uh, competitors did here. Uh, then for the free energy data set, there are also some additional interesting questions here. Um, so again, um, a lot of hydrophobic interactions shown here by the blue dashed lines. Um, uh, the um, uh, ester here in that representative structure is pointing into a similar uh, region as the carboxylate before. And again, um, there is the question of our prediction of uh, polar interaction. Now, interestingly, the um, trend here uh, is inverted with the least polar substituent being most active. The uh, ester here, we are going to more polar. Um, substituents like the carboxylate here, the affinity um, drops. This is interesting because um, the negative charge of the carboxylate in that series would sit at a, a quite similar position um, relative to the spirocycles as were shown on the uh, previous slide. And another question um, that is interesting here is um, how well methods can um, perform on that scaffold hub, which is shown here, which basically um, uh, reduces um, um, one nitrogen lone pair, which is exposed in the protein, uh, but basically maintaining uh, the activity. So that's uh, basically the end of the slide. I'd like to acknowledge here um, people from crystallography, especially Markus Rudolph, which uh, um, was the main contributor here, uh, determining the structure, then a lot of um, people from uh, chemistry in the different labs working on the series, biology, and then also Marcus Schlaus management. Um, and that brings me to the end of my presentation. It will be interesting uh, to see the results. Looking forward to them. Fortunately, I have to uh, apologize. I can't uh, attend the Q&A session, but hopefully these can be addressed in later in writing. Thank you.